let's quickly get started. Uh, and so, hello everyone, and welcome to today's P Cloudy's webinar on enhancing test reliability. How can AI help prevent test failures? My name is Dinaka, and I'll be the host for today. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few housekeeping rules. Your line is currently muted. However, you can submit your questions during the webinar using the Q&A option uh, given in the bottom of the screen. We will answer your questions as part of the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. And also please do note that this webinar is being recorded and uh, we will send out the link of the recording to share with your colleagues or to watch again later. With that said, let me introduce the speaker for today, Shoaib Ahmed. Shoaib is a pre-sales manager at pCloudy. He has over 11 plus years of experience in the IT industry. And prior to his role at pCloudy, he has worked with companies like Microfocus as a pre-sales consultant. Uh, he had done this in a application delivery management portfolio, uh, catering to different technologies such as DevOps, automation, performance, cloud, and mobility. So we have an expert here talking to us about how to make our tests reliable. So over to you, Shoaib. Without further ado, let me hand it over to you. All right, thank you so much, Dinakar, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Very warm welcome to all. And uh, uh, thank you so much for your time. So today's topic is more around the test uh, reliability. So we will look into various different factors of uh, test reliability and uh, how, how we can enhance this with the help of AI, right? And prevent the test failures. So without further delay, let me uh, get the agenda. Here is the uh, agenda. So when we talk about the agenda, so here is a quick uh, agenda. So let's so first we'll focus on uh, what is test reliability. Uh, in 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 terms of uh, you know the generic uh, base and then also we will try to understand in the software field in today's automation sector and uh, also we will understand how the test becomes flaky well, how the test becomes flaky in nature and we will also try to you know understand or you know try to overcome these issues that arises because of flakiness in the test uh, we will look into it various different options and then uh, the very important the self healing ai feature how this self healing ai can help overcome the flakiness and also overcome the test unreliabilities and then we will also look into some some of the advanced test analytics right so there are various different analytics that we uh, as a platform provide so how they can help in overcome the, the different challenges that arises and then followed by your live demonstrations at the end we will have a q and a session so in case if you have any questions Feel free to put your questions uh, in the chat. I'll be happy to take it at the end of this uh, demonstration. All right. So with that, let's get into your action and talk about the test reliability. So when we talk about test reliability, what exactly it is? So if we talk in general, generic terms, test reliability refers to an extent that it measures a uh, test measures a uh, without any errors. Right. So without any errors is basically uh, term it as a test reliability. So we can we can consider this test reliability in various dis, uh, different sections. Right. We, we can take it in the software field. So if we talk about in today's um, software testing, right, test reliability is to ensure and test the software that it works without any issues. Right. And same case, we can apply it to all our automation test scenarios as well, right? So in general, if we talk about in today's uh, quick evolving technology sector, the usage of software application has been increasing rapidly day to day in our lives. So be it at telecommunication sector or even FinTech or even from the healthcare side, uh, e-commerce or um, even the government sector, everywhere we are, you know, we are working with the softwares. Everywhere software is involved. So it is very important to test our applications so that, you know, they can be reliable, right? So there are various different types of tests that are conducted, right? So starting from manual testing to automation testing, uh, performance testing. So there are various different types. So the very important piece is to understand how the test can be reliable. So there are certain factors where the test results are not dependent, right? Uh, 
so when we talk about the occasion so you test it with uh, on any time anywhere the test results will still remains the same so this is when we, when we talk about when the tests are reliable and also when we talk about any feature specific you test any uh, any test suit any part of a test you pull out a test case you pull out a test case and you test the test will still remains the same this is also one of the criteria where we say the tests are reliable and also it's not dependent on any tester anyone test the software or anyone test the applications it should be flawless that's where we say the test is reliability the test reliability is very important in nature now what affects this test reliability there are various factors i get unreliable test will lead to inconsistent results it can be uh, the, the failures the number of pass rate versus the failure rates uh, could be again there are various different factors um, the why are the test failing because of inconsistent code it can be because of the environment or uh, because of the lack of test and this will further lead to flaky test so let's try and understand what flaky tests are in general right so when we talk about uh, flaky test so flaky test in general it refers to the testing which generates uh, you know inconsistent results uh, you know could be from failing or passing an unpredictability so flaky test is will certainly lead to a lot of uh, uh, you know issues within the uh, applications and the automation test scenarios that we are testing and that that again leads to unreliable test so here is one quick survey uh, by uh, two of jain software in the world so as per the google it says that the flaky test accounted for about 16% you know that is uh, you know of all the test failures in their system so that's something which is huge about 1.5 times longer time so when we talk about uh, you know how do we identify uh, you know finding these tests it can take a longer time than to fix the non flaky test ones so that's you the 16% is not a small rate right and also when we uh, there's another survey from microsoft which talks more on the revenue side right which states that you know about 1.14 billion dollar per year in terms of uh, the developer time is being spent right so that's an estimate uh, that you know the flaky test is been leading to so that will add to the revenue hit and again um, you know there's lack of uh, uh, abandoning from the user its standpoint so how do these tests become flaky in nature right so there are again uh, various uh, different factors so we have listed uh, a few of the uh, most um, you know consistent uh, factors that become that can lead to a flaky test so one is the external elements like the apis so so interaction with an external systems like the uh, apis or even the databases that introduces flakiness and uh, due to the factors could be from the network latency standpoint even the um, varying response time so this is one of the important factor which is leading to a flaky test and also when we talk about the environment side unstable environment so so when the test environment is isolated not controlled or even consistent so this will lead to variations in the performance and as well as the availability uh, on on the configuration side so it's very important to have a stable environment and the next the next piece is around the uh, test data so if the if the test data is in dynamic in nature so this can also lead to uh, you know flaky test so it's very important to handle the dynamic data so now that we are working with complex applications in the in today's time all right so the data is very much dynamic so we cannot have every time a static data so that in order to make the you know the flaky test to be reduced so there are there there is a complex scenarios there are complex applications built on multiple uh, technologies and so we have a dynamic set of data so it is very important to handle these dynamic set of data properly and with more dynamic set of data there are chances of having more flakiness within the test and then of course logical flaws so when the test contains the bugs uh, the typos or even the errors Uh, errors in the code so this can lead to a logical uh, flaws and then and the last one is that one which we have highlighted is insufficient ch checks if if the test has not gone through uh, sufficient checks then this can also become uh, lead to having more flaky test in nature
and there are of course a uh, few other dependencies uh, i mean it could be at the application side and even uh, you know the elements uh, the elements within the applications like the dates the times the uid the user inputs there are various different factors so these are the most common um, attributes or the factors that are leading to make the test flaky now how do we overcome this mess right so that's untangling the mess so it's very important to understand the failure what led to the failure of the test identify the uh, the failures with the proper reports right and also identify the root cause so uh, is my platform that i am using or is my automation tool that i am using is helping me to investigate the failure is something which is very important so investigating the failure is really important to overcome this issue and whatever test that you are performing you have to make sure that if it is valuable or not if it is valuable go ahead and then fix it if not just go ahead just delete and move away this is, otherwise there is a lot of time being spent again in identifying uh, what caused and there is unnecessary effort that's been spent for a test which is not valuable right so it's always better to move on uh, if you have able, able to identify the fix just move on and then associate these failures and tag them uh, appropriately if you have identified the failures tag it properly so that we can so that whosoever is working from the developer standpoint they can understand uh, what are all the failures and uh, and last but not least is to check if uh, the problem is within the test or even the environment so environment can also play a huge role as we saw in the previous slide so it's very important to determine what led to a problem is it because of the test itself or an environment most of the time what happens is we ignore on the environmental factors uh, environment side um, so environment side is something which is very important we need a stable environment where the uh, the test execution takes place not every time it can be test of course test there can be many flaky tests but environment can also contribute right so here is the uh, self healing how self healing can help overcome these challenges all right so it is self healing is basically uh, you know a feature wherein helps you heal your automation scripts um, you know without failures so that is something which can help you from the maintenance standpoint of your test so if you look at it on an um, uh, at a higher level so it potentially identifies the failures so which is very important so while your execution is going on it's very important to identify where exactly the issues are so that's number one and then it fixes the flaky scripts right if there are tests that are written and they are flaky in nature and the reasons we have we have looked in our previous slides so it helps fixes them so that's something which is very important so we will look into detail in the live demonstration i i have a live demonstration which can be discussed and then it automatically updates all the elements and the object locators you don't have to spend time in updating the elements or the locators so there are possibilities that in your application uh, when you have created a test and when you have a new build all together there are chances that the object elements could be changed right and spending effort in identifying these elements and locators takes a lot of time that's where um, you know the test maintenance effort goes very high right so the this, this self healing ai feature can help you overcome the uh, the challenges that are possessed from the flaky test and also it will update all the elements and the object locators automatically so that your test runs without any failures and yeah as i mentioned i mean uh, this will further effort the uh, reduces the maintenance effort you don't have to spend much time if the platforms are built with the self healing uh, you know capability it can automatically heal your scripts the failures will be taken care if there are any fixes within the scripts will be taken care and also from the element standpoint and and at that overall if you look at it in a broader picture it will reduce a lot of effort which in terms helps you in overcoming the uh, cost and so on and we can also talk about the analytics so analytics is very important piece all right so a real time analytics is something which is uh, very important so we will look into what are all the parameters 
that we provide in terms of um, uh, providing the real time insights uh, so insights into the real time metrics helps you you know in the faster feedbacks and also helps fixes you the issues you know before arising it right so for your you know could be from uh, you know creating a truly continuous testing methodology logic so there are various different um, parameters again within uh, the re the test reports that has been provided so that can help analyze and quickly fix them and also it's very important to note the failure and the pass rate so so generating metrics such as the pass versus fail the frequency of the retires and also the time uh, resolution to take to fix them so that's something which is very important and uh, we'll look into it and further last to it what is the impact of uh, these analysis how do we um, go ahead with this analysis and help resolve the issues so that's something which we will be uh, uh, looking in today's demonstration so not not much i'm not spend much time on the uh, presentations but rather i'll try to focus more around the uh, demonstration so let's uh, get into action i'll take you through a live demo on our platform so just to give a overview on our platform so peak cloudy is uh, basically the unified app testing cloud platform wherein we provide uh, uh, auto an automation solution inbuilt solution which is basically codeless from the codeless automation standpoint where you can create your scripts and uh, also execute them and we also have our own in test infrastructure which comes up with its own uh, physical devices that are hosted across different part of the world uh, not just mobile devices, but also on the bro web browser instance. So if you're looking to test your web applications, you can seamlessly test. And also uh, our solution comes up with inbuilt test management solution. So that's something uh, where we term it as a unified platform. So that becomes an end-to-end -end, uh, single test solution uh, for your uh, functional testing need, replacing the fragmented tool chains. So today we'll focus more around the, uh, the self-healing feature, how it can help. So I have two different builds um, different builds just to give you an example so one build is basically uh, you know you know where we have created an automation scripts for a specific build and now when we bring some changes in the new build how my ai uh, self healing feature can help overcome the issues so let me just quickly take you through maybe i'll just quickly connect to a physical device on the cloud which is available these are real physical devices that are hosted on our cloud I'm just using it just to show you. I'll just try to install one application and uh, try to get the objects and elements of that particular app. So as I mentioned, so we have different builds. Install both the builds so that uh, we are all on the same page and understand what was the change. So th these are the two builds. One is the Blood Bank one application dot apk and the other is Blood Bank dot apk. So I'll first try to install the first application and I'll get into the object spy mode. So yeah, the application has been installed. So we have created an automation script for this particular scenario where we are launching the app, signing in with the email ID and the password, and then signing in. All right, so that's the scenario. Very basic steps that we have performed. And uh, yeah, we are executing this through an APM script, okay? So if you here look at it, this is my script. Yeah, logging in with an username. And uh, this is my resource ID. All right, and then followed by uh, the password, and then we're logging in. Okay, that's the basic step what we have, and we have configured it uh, so that you know we can execute it on the uh, platform. So let me go back and try to expect. I'll just get into the object spy mode. So here is an object spy mode. So object spy mode is basically helps you identify the objects and elements, uh, and it helps you provide all the object hierarchy. Uh, for the script creation purpose and also gives you various different attributes and values. So that's something which is an inbuilt feature that comes uh, with from the platform perspective. So as a first step, I'll quickly go ahead and then click on start. Okay, once I click on start, the device in the app will uh, be ready for me to inspect. Yeah, now it's ready. Now I can just hover my mouse over the fields various different fields so for example if i have to click on email i'll just click on email here and i'll get the uh, the hierarchy of uh, 
uh, this particular option, right? So if you look at it here, so this is the resource ID. This is something which we can use it uh, for my script creation part. So there are various different options so which you can use it depending on um, what is convenient to you. And if you look at it, so this is my resource ID, com.android, that ion the, the blood bank ID, input underscore username. And same, I'll just hover the mouse over here so that you can have a look at it. So this is my resource ID, which is something which I can copy, okay? Something which I can use it in my test scripts. Now, if I just go back to my script and show you, here it is. So this is the resource ID of my first build. Okay, similarly, I have extracted for password and also for clicking on login button. All right, so whatever that I have captured is I have translated into, I have taken it to my automation script. Now let me go back <clears throat> and also maybe if I have to show it for password, I'll just click on password. Here is the one, it says input underscore password. Yeah, I'll just over the mouse over here. It says in, input under, underscore password. Yeah, so that's the second field where we have got the resource ID. And the last field is of course the uh, login button. Okay, so this is my flow. If I try to execute this, the script will work without any issues right that, that's the typical behavior now what i will do is i'll go ahead and stop this and install another build okay which i already have with some changes so we have brought some changes intentionally to this application so that to see if the platform can handle from the self-filling standpoint so here is the second application bloodbank.apk i'll just go ahead and then install it I'll, I'm still in the object spy mode itself so that I can show you what elements have been changed. Okay, I'll just go ahead and click on email. Right, so now if you look at it, here is my resource ID. It has changed from input underscore username to just user, if you look at it. So this is the resource ID, I can just show it over here as well. It says ID slash input underscore user. So I'll just go back and just show you so my test step remains the same, right? My ID is changed now. So what I am doing is I'm not going to do this change. So typically without self-filling feature, what you tend to do is if your test scripts are failing because of object properties getting changed, you come here and change the resource ID. So that's the typical uh, uh, you know, uh, scenario or the way of doing changes within your script. Yeah, same cases with password as well. I just click on password. Yeah, it's ID slash PWD. So it is instead of uh, input underscore password, it has changed to ID dot PWD. So here are the changes, and so even for the login button. So we have intentionally changed for all the different uh, different parameters so that we can see whether this has changed. So this is for ID slash button dot log, and here it is ID slash button dot login. Okay, I'll not do these changes. So now I have shown you the builds. I'll just come out of the object spy mode so that I can go ahead and then execute it. So let me release this device. All right, and now just go back to my existing script. And I'll just quickly um, run through what all the parameters that we have used. So there is a runner.java file where we are uh, initiating the uh, driver, okay? And also driver.java. This is where, where we have incorporated all my key capabilities, okay, for my application. So first, what I'll try to do is I have two different applications, Bloodbank 1 and Bloodbank 2. So this script is designed to work with Bloodbank 1, okay? Because that's the resource ID what we have taken in the, uh, uh, you know, for our test cases, right? So this is this is for the Red Bank an application. And uh, yeah, I have parameterized it, the username and password. So here is the uh, capabilities which we have used to, you know, integrate with uh, the PCLOD platform, just simple capabilities with stocks, uh, which basically are the username, PI key, the application details, followed by on which device you are going to execute. Okay, so that's something which you can provide it here. And the so this is since it's an Android based application, so we are going with an Android, and uh, yeah, so these are the capabilities. And I have uh, configured my environmental 
as well just to provide the username and the password all right so now we are ready now we can go ahead and then execute so before that just let me quickly check if cell two device is available just go here see still i can see both there are two devices uh, available i can go ahead and execute it so remember this is blood bank one okay so now the just go to run of the java and then quickly run as to the test okay the execution has been began i'll just go to the pcloady platform now my active session i should be able to see the device booked yeah the device is booked we'll wait for it to get started so once this gets ongoing in the ongoing progress it'll take you through the uh, device yeah it's ongoing i'll just quickly connect Side by side, I can monitor the logs as well. Yeah, the application is installed. It will pass as expected because the resource ID, whatever is taken, is for the blood bank one application. Okay, the execution got uh, without any issues. All right, so now let's take a uh, look at the results. Yeah, username entered, password entered, login click, demo pass pass. These tests are based on the resource ID, which we have taken for the uh, application build number one. Okay, so it, it remains perfect time. Now for the new build, which we have, that is nothing but blood bank two, which I have just, which I just installed and showed you that resource ID has been changed for the username, password, and also for the login button. So I'm not doing any change here. So what I'll try to do is I'll just go here and then change the application name from one to two. Okay, I've just changed it. Please save it and I'll just come back. I can run it. So what I'll do is I'll just release this device. Maybe if you if I want I can just run it on any other device as well. So let's see if uh Galaxy F14 is available. I'll just take a little note over here. I'll just go back. Yeah, this is available. Maybe I can run it here. Uh, what I'll try to do is I'll just go back to my script. <clears throat> Remember, I have done the change here. And I'll just say instead of running it on Google device full name, I'll just change the parameter here. And then run it on a different device. This one. This was on the 11 version. And let me see if I say control yes. Okay. Remember I have done the changes for the blood bank application too. And then I'll just go here and then trigger my test. So ideally in real uh, in um, in real time practice the application should get failed here. Test execution should ideally get failed. But it's self feeling this will automatically click here. All right. So I'll just wait for the device to get booked. Yeah, the device has been booked successfully. I'll just wait for this to get started. Yeah, it's ongoing. Yeah, the application got installed. Username. Put some wait times there, password entered, and then we'll go ahead and click on login. Right. All right. As you can see, the test got passed without any failures, even though I had change in my resource in my new build. All right. So that's the uh, beauty of uh, uh, the AI based self feeling. It automatically understands that there is a change within my uh, resource ID. It goes goes ahead and then it's the uh, the the locators and the elements from the backend. So it's everything is being taken care of the at the platform level itself. Uh, there is no 
prerequisite as such right earlier uh, we had a uh, prerequisite wherein you would pro you will be providing the uh, you had to provide the capabilities for self healing all right so there was one specific capability where you would be adding it and uh, now that dependency is gone we have moved to a new self healing uh, for the advanced version so wherein this is taken care automatically so so this helps in overcoming uh, any changes uh, within your applications if there are any new builds at the object property levels and this gets updated automatically all right so it got passed for the same script for two different builds all right so that's how the uh, self healing works in 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 real time practice all right so now maybe i'll just quickly take you through the uh, the analytics section which we discussed maybe just go to the report section here Let's look at the reports in real time. How the uh, the reports can be helpful in understanding if there are any other failures, uh, right? So reports are very key uh, to understand uh, the changes or the uh, you know the failures within the application. So it's just loading. Just give me a minute. Yeah, um, it's on. I can just go ahead and then. Yeah. So. I have various different scripts, right? There's different uh, reports. Maybe I'll just take one, show you how, how the report looks like. Yeah. So this is the uh, the insight, uh, real time insights that you see. So while the execution is going on, you can still get these reports, right? So for example, while the test you are exiting, so the test can go on for you know few hours or maybe more than uh, five six hours if you are you know doing a nightly build or you know if there is a long suit of test so while the test is going on if you want to have the real time insights to understand what are all the failures how many number of test cases that are how many number of test cases that are failed so that's something which is uh, provided as part of uh, the report, which gives details insight so you can further get into the device level metrics understand and see uh, the status of your test or how much time, what is the duration and on which device you uh, performed your test, along with all the details like logs. So we capture all the uh, logs, the capabilities that you have used to pass and what are the uh, result with the desired result, which which can be very uh, meaningful and uh, useful for your analysis purpose. And then there are device logs. We provide all the device metrics logs, which can be helpful in case of there, a, there are any crash that happens within the a device while the execution is going on so this logs can be very handy followed by apm logs all the apm standard logs gives you um, you know insight about your application uh, level issues if there are any around apm server side so you'll be able to get it profiling more towards the performance metrics or um, uh, providing the data in terms of the cpu memory and the battery chain all right and then also the session video will be captured here also which you can play it instantly um, uh, for your test execution so that's something which you can monitor in real time and which can be further downloaded in case if you want to download this report so that's something uh, you know from the report standpoint what we provide and then you can also share the link uh, if you have to share this report to your various different stakeholders for them to uh, understand how the automation execution went ahead and then also see the failures and the analysis of it so that's more on the uh, real time insight reports of it and then further we have added a few more insights uh, within my uh, within our test so if i just go back to my recent test say let me pick up uh, the same test case Yeah, if I just, uh, uh, if I have to get an overview on the various different uh, runs that I have done, so I can just select it here, select the test which you want. And if you want to do a comparison, you can just click on actions, merge. So we do uh, provide a comprehensive uh, analytics in terms of uh, providing a, a pie chart, right, which can help you understand how many bills that you had run and what are all the results how many number of cases that are passed failed there are any uh, incompleted ones um, you know so you can you get to see all this in the merge column 
this you can also compare the results all right for various different bills how many number of bills that were run and what is the pass percentage all right so that you see so if i look at it uh the uh Sladoc has a uh, decent amount of uh, uh the past ones and, and so with the progressive report the pr reports so that's the build comparison that we do so if you're running multiple builds build execution and if you want to merge it and get an insightful report you can get this as well and this is something which can be shared among the team members so this is more towards on the uh, uh on the uh, the report the segment side uh, which we just spoke about during our presentations all right so so that's pretty much it on the uh, self healing piece uh uh, we are ahead of i mean we are very much ahead of the time uh, maybe we can uh, quickly get into the questions if there are any questions i can go ahead and take it up and answer your questions All right, uh, I can see a few questions coming in. Uh, let me try to answer them. So we have a question from one of our uh, uh, attendees. Uh, his name is Arun. He says, uh, what, what are the prerequisites to get started with the uh, self-healing? Understand there was some prerequisites in your previous uh, version. Okay, good question. I think uh, I did cover this during my uh, demonstration. But however, uh, there are no prerequisites as such that are needed. Uh, as we have moved to a new uh, self-filling, which is 2.0, uh, you know, there's absolutely no need uh, for you to add any capabilities or any other prerequisites. It's everything been taken care of at the platform level itself. So we have, uh, you know, brought this feature within the at the platform level. So you don't have to add any capabilities as such. Just go ahead at the cap required capabilities for the integration standpoint and, and select the device that you are looking at it. And so the endpoint, so everything will be taken care of. So you can go ahead and test and see with your different builds. So if there are any changes within your object properties, uh, test with different uh, different builds you know, so that you can see the differences. Okay, so that can help you um, from the maintenance standpoint. Yeah, hope that answers your question, Arun. All right, so there is uh, one more questions from one more question from Priya says, how maintainable are the tests? How, how what percentage of uh, how much percent can we reduce in terms of reducing the uh, the from the percentage standpoint? All right, so uh, if I understood your question, so you are referring to the maintenance effort. How much percentage can we consider? Uh, to say that the maintenance effort has been reduced a good question person i don't have a definite answer to it so as we are um, moving uh, more towards the advanced versions of uh, self-healing there are uh, certain limitations at this uh, given point but we have tried to cover most of it uh, but however uh, in general if you take an average about 60 percent of your uh, test maintenance would uh, can be uh, you know, reduced at this given point as we speak, right? And it can be at that. And uh, I don't, as I said, it I don't have a definite number here, but still, it depends on uh, the type of uh, the application that you're testing and the type of issues that you have within your test and the type of changes that. So about sixty percent you can consider. So as we move on, this percentage will uh, will will grow gradually as we move on. Yeah, hope I answered your question. All right, so how accurately does the AI fix the scripts? Right, so I mean, uh, to an extent, we are able to capture all the attributes and uh, values, various different values. As we have seen today in today's demonstration, uh, we were specific around the resource ID. 
uh, right so it can be any any attribute or any, any attributes right so we are not limited it can be uh, the x path as well your x path could have been changed if you have used x path or even the css path so the platform the feature is built in such a way that uh, as this is driven through ai which can identify the change uh, within your build that you have executed and um, you know it tries to fix the uh, the elements it tries to update the element uh, for your new build automatically so you don't have to worry about uh, fixing the issues uh, manually right so i cannot really give you a percentage or how accurate it is but yeah for most of the applications uh, we are able to uh, the ai is uh, is uh, is capable enough of fixing the issues uh, at the script level all right so that's something which um, uh, you know uh, from the platform side where we have built this feature so which can help you overcome uh, the issues that you are facing right now right so i i encourage you to go ahead and then try try it from your side and see uh, how the uh, how it helps in your scenarios could be a complex ones you may you might take some uh, different applications and test it and let us know your feedback on it yeah but this has been tested so you can be rest assured and uh, you know see the changes within your application side on the test execution hope that answers your question all right so there's one more question from seeker he says does the self filling apply for all of my script or will it work for multiple scripts it is for all of your scripts right uh, so when you say all of c basically you might have different set of uh, test cases so irrespective of uh, you know which test case or which script that you are running if you are executing it on our peakloady platform it is inbuilt with a self filling feature which is which will be applicable for all all your all your tests you might have hundreds of tests that you are running it all right and um, yeah you so you can use the self filling uh, capability for your different test and it it pretty much applies for all for all all your test scripts all right hope that answers your question and then there we have one more question uh, can we use self filling for testing browsers and web testing as well yes of course you can use it uh, for for your browser based uh, applications as well uh, where this can be incorporated uh, so this is something um, uh, where we have advanced for mobile and as well as the you know, web application side so this is applicable for both mobile and as well as web, web browsers so there's one more follow up question from seeker who says can i use a self filling for my existing scripts yes of course whatever script that you have created see it's not applicable for script that you are going to create right it is applicable for all your scripts irrespective of uh, uh, what scripts that you are using in uh, so it is applicable as long as if you are executing on the peakloady platform the self filling feature is inbuilt and uh, this will be taken care i hope i have answered to your questions all right uh, so that's uh, pretty much it from my side <clears throat> uh, maybe if you guys have any other questions uh, please feel free to reach us out i'll be happy to answer them one on one and uh, yeah thank you so much for your uh, time and the interactions that we had was uh, really great i have seen a lot of questions from different teams from different people coming in so yeah thank you so much uh, for your valuable time and uh, hope uh, the new self feeling feature can bring in a lot of changes within your uh, automation test automation for your mobile as well as web application so that's pretty much it from my side uh, thank you so much again yeah have a good day good night good, good evening to you all great. all right great thank you thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights uh, shoaib and uh, even as we draw this presentation to a close you've kind of been very practically sharing insights in the testing space so we want to thank you for sharing your uh, wisdom with us and we also want to thank uh, each one of our participants who have joined in and set aside time to be here and uh, learn about 
test flakiness, test reliability, and also learn a bit about the self-healing area that we're dealing that we're working on. So great. Uh, and I'm sure these uh, few insights have sparked some questions, sparked some ideas to think about, to come back. So please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you, we've got our contact details. We'll be shooting out an emailer with the recording and you can contact, you can write back to us on that email itself and we'll respond to each one of you if you have any questions. So thank you once again for joining in and uh, have a great rest of the evening or the rest of the day. Thank bye you bye. so much. Bye-bye.